My name is Mike Klein, and I'm a FIDE master. Excellent. And uh, how old were you when you started becoming really serious about chess? And also, if you could preface that by telling us how you became involved with chess, even. Sure. Uh, well, I learned the game when I was four, and uh, that was when I was in kindergarten. But I probably wouldn't call myself serious until about first grade, which is when I started playing competitively. Mm -hmm. So about six years old. I think when you're that young, you don't always know uh, when you're getting serious. There's no epiphantic moment where you make a decision to become serious. Your parents just sort of notice it for you and, you know, wean you along. Mm -hmm. um, I got involved when a man from South Africa came to Charlotte, North Carolina. His name is Larry Goldberg. Hmm. And he, uh, he mm -hmm. proposed to the local school board that the school board give public money to start chess clubs in the public school system. And I was fortunate enough to go to one of his uh, seminars, as it were, and uh, where he espoused the benefits of chess and uh, started taking lessons from him. And uh, he started organizing local tournaments and went from there. Great. Yeah. Sounds exciting. How do you and how does anyone get better at chess? Uh, you get better by sort of making it part of your daily regimen. You don't, you don't dabble in it. You need to do all the things that it takes to, um, to, to make it a regular part of your routine. You know, If you go running once, you don't lose weight. But mm -hmm. if you go running three or four times a week, you do. Mm -hmm. And so I think a regularity of, of uh, instruction is very important. Now, we can talk about the benefits of how much you should spend on tournaments versus how much you spend on lessons with teachers or what have you, but I just think that you just have to, to devote yourself to the game regularly. Even if it's just once a week, mm -hmm. uh, that's better than just picking up the game and, and then putting it on a shelf after you're done with a tournament or whatever. Very good. Maybe we could follow up and just ask a little more, you know, what's more important, the study of chess or the practice, uh, you know, playing in the tournaments and so forth? Uh, they're both obviously fundamental parts of getting better. Um, if I had to pick one, I would say practice. Uh, mostly from personal experience. I didn't do much studying growing up, um, but I did play in many, many tournaments. And uh, just if you did nothing else but played in many, many tournaments and had those games reviewed by strong players, I think that would be enough to propel you to an echelon that you couldn't get to with, uh, with just theoretical at-home preparation. I, so I would, I would count practice as being more important. Okay, excellent. And what about some strategies? Maybe did you have any strategies early on when you were younger to, to help you you know, climb the ladder to become a FIDE master? Um, well, I became a FIDE master 10 years ago, and I applied for the title last month. Uh, so one strategy is to be aware when you've made a title. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's one idea. But um, strategies is uh, one thing I did that has become commonplace for top juniors is to play several sections ahead of where you are eligible mm -hmm. to play. Mm -hmm. And um, it's hard for a child to understand that learning is more important than winning. So um, the main strategy that most top players use and that my top students use is in the lesser important tournaments, play several sections above. But when you get to the really important tournaments, whatever you deem them to be, say the nationals, then go ahead and play in your regular section. Because I don't think it's beneficial to only play sections you can't win for experience. Because confidence is a very important part of chess. And if you don't have confidence going into your games, that's going to be very detrimental to how you play. And if, if you don't win some, you're going to forget how to win, as it were. So some sort of balance of playing better competition is probably the best strategy I can think of. Good points. Were there any particular you know, challenges, you know, personal challenges, that you had to overcome when you were trying to get stronger? Um, it's an interesting question. Uh, there was a pretty good amount of local chess in Charlotte. I think a lot of times top juniors are in random parts of the country, and they have trouble getting to more competitions. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that when I went to national competitions, kids that were on par with my level would undoubtedly talk about going to all these different tournaments that I never even considered going to. Um, so maybe uh, for me, lack of national experience growing up besides the once a year spring nationals. Um, but my parents were always very keen about the idea of balancing chess with other parts of my life. So to their credit, um, maybe I could have been pushed a little bit more, but maybe I wouldn't have turned out to be as well-rounded. So mm -hmm. that's the only thing I can think of is maybe just geographically I didn't get out and play enough national competition. Well, obviously, you've been very successful. Thank you. Uh, what type of effort in study did it take you to reach the point where you're at now, your peak performance? Right. I'm probably a very bad person to ask this question to. I don't really remember self-motivated study until maybe I reached about 2,000. I think kids can get pretty far on natural talent. But if they haven't developed that work ethic, if they've just been doing it with natural talent, it's kind of hard to 
realize that when you've plateaued that you need to put in some time for yourself. So um, I kind of take a pass on this question. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I mean, I, I reached my peak rating uh, when I entered college, and this is not different than some other chess players that are here. Um, so it's, it's just very hard when you, when you reach a point in your life where you've got other things going on. So right. um, I would just encourage children when their life is more simple, when they're in elementary and junior high and even early parts of high school, to put in as much time as they can to get better then because once, once you get past high school, you've got so many other important life challenges that, that chess becomes more um, segmented and not as regular as we talked about earlier. Right, so. right. How do, you, how do you prepare for a tournament or for a match? You know, if you're, if That's a good question. Um, I play other sports that involve a lot of concentration, um, especially golf. And if you, talk about, if you talk to top golfers about how they approach putts, which are largely concentration-based, they have a routine they go through. And it almost doesn't matter what routine they go through as long as it's a repetitive process that happens every single time they line up for a putt. So specific to a game situation, I'll try to find out my opponent as early as possible and try to find out some information about him, look through past games I've played. And it helps put you in the right mindset because even if that opening does not come up, uh, just the fact that you feel as though you're prepared um, makes a big difference. Um, in the week before a tournament, I'll open books that don't normally get opened. I'll do the normal sort of, you know, make sure I remember things I've forgotten since the year that I played previous. Uh, how does winning and losing affect you? you know, how do you handle a loss at a tournament? Uh, this actually ties into some of the other questions you've asked me. I think that at my level and not my experience, um, there's a lot of ego involved because you're always playing in the top section and you're always playing against other top players. And after a while, I think the thrill of victory definitely gets offset by all the defeats you suffer. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what we go through. Also, as chess instructors, um, I want to do other things on weekends than just play most of the time. Sure. So. Maybe one more question. Uh, what books or players have influenced you the most? Um, influence is a good question. I certainly admire certain players that I don't resemble their style at all. Um, I like Mikhail Tal a lot. Um, domestically, I, I like um, uh, Alexander Shabalov a lot. Mm -hmm. But those are both some of the most creative and attacking-minded players of all time. And uh, I don't resemble their style at all. So. I don't know necessarily if I uh, um, resemble them, but I definitely do admire both of those players. Um, and I really resemble any kid, or I really admire any kid who's willing to put himself out there and uh, you know, compete in these tournaments. I think going to classic tournaments with my students, for me, is sort of part of an extension of my childhood mm -hmm. because every experience they've gone through, I've been through you know, five times over. So um, I, I mean, I just... I look at these kids and I see a lot of me and them, and so I just admire any kid who's willing to put himself out there and, and actually compete. Well, I think it's great that you're participating in the Castle Chess Camp and coaching other students. Do you have any words of wisdom or anything else you'd like to share and to wrap up here? Uh, well, I've really enjoyed my time here. This is definitely the most professional chess camp that I've ever attended. Um, it's, it's humbling, but in a good way. I mean, since I'm out of the competitive scene, I'm very happy to be modest and be one of the lower tiered chess instructors here at the camp. Um, but I just I love the fact that there's so many top players here in the country and they take what they're doing very, very seriously. Um, but at the same time, it's a good blend of fun in, in addition to the, uh, you know, the, the relative intensity of the camp. So uh, I would encourage every kid to, to come and try this camp. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful campus and there's so much to do. So um, you know, um, it's great they're taking time in their summer to actually learn and not, uh, not just sit around the house like right. I think I did. So. <laughs>